Thank you so much for joining us at our Risk Five Summit 2019. I wanted to start off today with a huge note of gratitude. Thank you so much for this tremendous community that we have been building, for this tremendous opportunity that we are driving at all parts of this community. But for today, thank you to the program committee who culled through many, many papers and other requests to be presenters here. We had a hit rate of about 50%. We were only able to accept about 50%. We saw more submissions this year than we ever have in the past. And these are very thoughtful talks that our community wanted to share. And I'm so sorry that we couldn't accept all of them. But perhaps you'll take time today to listen to all these very compelling talks. And thank you so much to our speakers who are joining us to share their technical leadership, to share their market opportunities together with this group. Thank you also to our generous sponsors. Without sponsors, we wouldn't have coffee. We wouldn't have cool things to learn and see and do. And uh, thank you so much to the generosity of our sponsors. Thank you as well to our members. You'll see today how many members have joined this revolution. And it really is a revolution on so many levels. So we are so excited for the ongoing growth that we are seeing across our membership base and invite you to join us if you haven't already. In fact, at this point, I'm signing about two membership agreements a day. So <laughs> we've been busy and we are continuing to grow. But that's not all. The Risk Five community expands and extends beyond the foundation. And we are so pleased and so proud to have spent the last year engaging with everyone in all parts of the world, in all parts of the ecosystem, in numerous domains. This is our time. This is our time for radical disruption of an industry that has been humming along kind of quietly for about the last 30 years. Back in the 1980s, there was a processor war. That processor war was driven by many proprietary architectures kind of battling for the same thing a system that would plug into the wall with a constant supply of energy, something that could sit on your desktop or in your data center. Moving forward, we saw, well, we need some different dimensions here. We need something with, a, with power consumption that's much lower for our mobile devices. Continue to move forward, and in the 2000s, we started to see more advances in IoT. We're continuing to see that today. And there's tremendous opportunity for disrupting the status quo through custom hardware, through you know, dispelling the myths of the proprietary architectures that we've been reliant on in the past. So I encourage you to engage in the many dimensions. In fact, we've got many areas that we're starting to see uh, take traction already. You see cloud and data center applications you know, from Alibaba in China to Facebook in Silicon Valley. We're seeing a lot of momentum around the world. We're seeing advances in mobile and wireless. We're seeing automotive start to take hold. So these are some of the great opportunities that are driving demand for a custom approach. And that's something that you can do readily on RISC-V. But that community isn't just an industry focus. There are so many talents that have come together in this community, from the uh, chip and, and ASIC parts to the universities and, and academia, looking through uh, various industry applications from cloud to HPC, looking at the IO and memory and other interconnects, thinking about the services and the other pieces of the ecosystem. This is a community of collaborators. This is not a community that looks to uh, compete on all elements, but there is some competition as well. And that's the beauty of open source. We can come together on the pieces that are our foundational building box, while also understanding that there's plenty of room for differentiation. We are looking at this through many lenses. There are many dimensions to community, and we must do that at a global level. Geography is only one dimension of community. And through that, we see a global, a global partnership. We see global partners spanning uh, across industries, 
that are looking for the best designs, the best manufacturing, and the best opportunities for verification, compliance, and all the other tools and resources. By taking a global approach to our partnerships, we can take a global approach to opportunity. Let's take a little bit of a walk around the world. So in China, we are seeing hundreds joining into the RISC-V revolution. In Beijing and in Shanghai, we have RISC-V associations that have sprung up. We're having another one coming through as well, uh, focused on uh, a RISC-V lab. We recently helped to support the launch of a Tsinghua Berkeley uh, lab in Shenzhen. We are seeing actual uh, engagement at all levels, from academia to industry. In Europe, we recently hosted our uh, workshop in Zurich, and it was uh, tremendous to see the very many stakeholders we saw, from security and, and, uh, and HPC through the European Processor Initiative, as well as many different stakeholders across different uh, flavors that are developing on RISC-V. So we're very pleased to team up with ETH Zurich to host that conference. In India, India has had tremendous investment through the Shakti project with six different processors funded. The Shakti project has just, just really got the momentum going. Recently, in the, this last fall, we had an online conference, a live online conference with thousands of folks joining in for a live talks and live Q&A. We need to try that in other parts of the world, too. That's the beauty of massive geography uh, community. What we see working in one place, we can replicate in another. In Japan, in Japan, we saw a 50% increase in the number of attendees in Tokyo Day. It was a beautiful event. It blew me away. More than 300 people came together that day at Hitachi's beautiful campus to learn more about RISC-V. And this was not a quiet crowd. This was a crowd that had questions, that, had, that wanted to really deeply engage. In fact, I went to the reception that night, and it was a two-hour reception, and I literally stood in one spot for two and a half hours with just a constant stream of dialogues. It was amazing. The level of energy and the level of commitment that we're seeing there was, was just, you know, really swelled our hearts. In North America, we're seeing continued integration in existing products through NVIDIA with GPUs, with Western Digital and storage. We're seeing continued innovations transpiring and continued collaborations ongoing. Yet just this week, we heard about more folks that are in the RISC-V community that are startups, starting new businesses. It's not just for the large corporations, but it's also for our, our uh, entrepreneurs. It's, there's never been a better time to start a business in microprocessors. In fact, I don't know of another time when it was this affordable as well. Pakistan. This has got to be one of my favorite pictures of the year. I so wish that I could have been there that day. That, the excitement and initiative that we see going on there that sci 5 led through one of their technical symposiums. In fact, they had two and saw over 3,000 people that are really saying, you know what? It's our turn. We want to participate. We want to be part of the semiconductor revolution. Count us in. So welcome to the revolution. Whether you're looking at it through the lens of a supplier, through a, uh, an end user in a marketplace, whether you're looking at it as a student or as a seasoned practitioner, whether you're looking at it as a standard or as open source, we welcome you. In fact, we're growing at a rapid clip. We now have more than 435 members. It's probably 440 by now. Uh, and we're seeing them across a huge diversity. I remember being in Estonia. In Estonia, it is actually easier to start a new company than it is to file your taxes. Five minutes online. And what I learned there is that there's such a desire, such an appetite to engage in the next revolution of technology. RISC-V presents that opportunity. So here we are today. That blue line is continuing to grow. We're continuing to gauge it across multiple parts of this ecosystem, multiple parts of this community. 
And the excitement that I glean every day from this community, it energizes me. It's energizing our technical working groups. And for this, we are maturing as an organization. So I wanna turn now to some transitions that we're going through and invite you to come with us. First, we'll be moving into some new membership levels. I'll describe those shortly. Those membership levels will help us to support incredible programming to serve all of us. Risk Five Foundation is successful when our members are successful. And so to help foster that success, to grow talent, to grow opportunities, we are going to be funding six fundamental programs to help this community. We're opening technical development. Until now, we've had all of our technical groups have been uh, developing in, in, in a confidential mode with final output as open and accessible to all. We are shifting to an open, open mode, right? We will be uh, making our technical work groups non-confidential and uh, moving that, you know, and continuing to have open source deliverables. You still need to be a member to participate, but we will have read-only access for non-members as well. We want to increase our transparency as an organization across our 20 plus work groups. Governance. Governance is really tied closely to membership levels. And right now we need to shift to better representation across all of our membership levels. So you'll see that as we increase our ratios of board participation across members. And some of you may have heard that we're reincorporating in Switzerland. I wish I could stand here today and tell you, oh, it's a done deal. We are still navigating the nuances of that incorporation, but expect that we'll uh, complete that by the end of the year. These changes we expect to go into uh, effect as of January 1st. These are those six programs that I told you are gonna help us deliver value. First, technical deliverables. We will uh, strengthen all of our technical work groups with solid programs, resources, and other uh, development assets to help us progress quickly, to help us fill out the ecosystem together with our members. Compliance and verification. This is the part where we've got some things that we've uh, developed already, and we're gonna continue to buckle down and improve on that. Visibility. Some people call this marketing, but I really think it's shedding light on the tremendous progress that this community is making. So that's talks, that's participating in blogs, it's participating in events, it's engaging with the press and analysts as well. Learning and talent, two flavors of this. One, this has to do with engaging our universities, setting out a core curriculum that can be used around the world. It also has to do with professional training and development for those who are already engaged in the profession. How can we help boost their skills on risk five? Advocacy and outreach. I love advocacy and outreach. This is all about engineers talking to engineers. This is not marketing. This is helping to tackle challenges together, ramp up on skills, fill out, uh, you know, and respond to challenges folks may be having in the moment. So this is uh, engaging through meetups and, and many other mechanisms online. And then finally, marketplace. I want everyone who's looking for Risk Five to be able to find the tools, resources, and, and other aspects as quickly as possible. So we're continuing to uh, invest there as well. Just a quick run through some of the progress that we're making. I mentioned that we've got more than 20 work groups already in motion. This is a snapshot of those. In addition to specific work groups with an end deliverable, we also have committees that have, are, have formed around HPC, around security. We've got one proposed on safety as well. One of the things that we're ready to share with the community today is the, the first version of our compliance framework. So be on the lookout for more details on this. This is a great step forward for our organization as we continue the progress in technical deliverables. In visibility and marketplace, we have uh, you know, completed numerous events this year. We've participated in many industry forums as well as our own events. And we're so pleased for the, the great engagement that we've had from speakers to attendees and as well as from sponsors. We are continuing to uh, focus on creating more assets 
that do not require you to be in person. So be on the lookout for more videos, webinars, and other resources. I mentioned meetups. Meetups have taken off around the world. We have more than 2,200 folks participating in meetups around the world. So if you have interest in starting a meetup or joining a meetup in your area, let us know. We've got great starter kits and can help you with content and speakers. So this chart is looking hard to read on my monitor. Trust me, this will all be available. Our new membership levels that we're, we're coming out with, there are three of them. First, the community level. It's the free level for universities as well as individuals. It's a great way to get your feet wet. There's not a, you don't get to commercialize at that level, but you do get to participate, learn, and grow. The strategic members. This is your base membership. This is something that will have tiered pricing based on how uh, large your organization is by employees. So this uh, has all the same rights as full membership. You have commercialization opportunity as well. And then premier members. These are for folks who are strategically, deeply, very invested in Risk Five and are willing and able to help us underwrite much of the programming. These premier members have a seat at the uh, board table and pay a bit higher rate so that they can help us support all of that programming. That's all I've got to share with you this morning. There's so much more that we, more conversation we could have behind each and every one of these. I will definitely be around and I can't wait to talk to each of you about your experiences with Risk Five and where we can take it together next. Please do connect with us. You'll see I even have my WeChat on there. The day I did this in China, I had 80 new friends by the end of the talk. So if you're on WeChat, so am I. Uh, but there are also other ways to connect. Please follow us as an organization on Twitter. Please follow us on LinkedIn and engage and add your voice to this revolution. Thank you.